Welcome back. I made a video a few weeks back about overclocking the Raspberry Pi Pico and I received a bunch of feedback. In this video I'm going to answer three questions. How to fix that overclocking issue where you can't talk to the flash memory above 300 MHz. There's a fix for that. Can you clock the Pico up and down? Or put another way, can you implement variable speed clocks in a program? What about heat? Does the Pico get hot? Does cooling make a difference? So number one, making the flash work at 400 megahertz. So I got a tweet from Graham again. All you need to do is add some build options, which increase the flash clock divider. I couldn't find uh, documentation anywhere for this, but I did find a Raspberry Pi forum post about it. And all you have to do is add three lines uh, to your cmakelists.txt file in your project configuration. And it works. I was able to um, overclock the Pico whilst using the flash memory above 400 megahertz and it works totally fine. A couple of notes. The flash memory can go up to 133 megahertz. The default divider is two. So increasing the divider to four means that the, the flash memory can keep on working well above the maximum overclock for the CPU. Also, if you're not overclocking above 266 megahertz, there's no need to change the flash clock divider at all. Number two. Can you implement dynamic clock speeds, speeding up and slowing down in a program? Yes, you can. Here's the chart. So I wrote a program which increases and decreases the clock speed, and I ran this over about 30 minutes. The only thing you need to be careful of is to stay away from the absolute maximum clock speed possible with your Pico. The reason for this is if the clock speed setting call fails in your program, it'll panic, and the Pico will either hang or reset itself. Number three. What about heat? Does the Pico get hot and does the cooling and does cooling make a difference? So this one question kept me pretty busy. I could not feel the temperature difference by touching it. Uh, it didn't feel hot. So I measured it with a non-contact infrared thermometer, which showed the Pico was about five degrees above ambient at the maximum overclock. This got me thinking about the built-in temperature sensor, which is inside the Pico CPU. The datasheet says you need to calibrate the sensor before it will be accurate, and I wondered how I could measure a range of different temperatures, and then I remembered I live in Canada. Alexa, what's the temperature outside? At the moment, it's minus 5 degrees Celsius. Today, you can expect a high of minus 4 degrees. So I took my Pico outside, I let it cool to below zero, and then I brought it inside, allowed it to warm up, measuring the die temperature and then the, that internal diode voltage. I did this without over, overclocking, and you can see my calibration chart. My calibration at 1.1 volts is in kind of perfect agreement with the Pico formula. It's just the offset is off. So this, the, the slope of the line is within 0.3% of the Pico datasheet. It's just offset by five degrees. And this seems to be a common problem based on the comments that I was reading in the Raspberry Pi forum. This means if you can figure out the offset for your Pico, the reading should be relatively accurate. And the reason that Picos may, may have these different offsets is uh, uh, the comment is it's likely re related to manufacturing differences. So now we're ready to test overclocking while measuring internal temperature. Here's my cooling setup. I had a few parts lying around that I could use. Uh, I was half doing this as a joke because I wasn't expecting much, but I was really surprised by the results. So here I am, I'm using a little uh, aluminum, aluminium heatsink and some Arctic MX4 thermal compound. I tested with just the heatsink with the thermal compound and then I added a five volt 60 millimeter fan uh, that was powered from uh, the USB five volt uh, supply. Um, I used some long bolts just to hold the fan above the Pico board. So here to my surprise are the results. First, the core CPU temperature without a heatsink is much higher than I expected. It's up above 40 degrees. The Pico CPU pa package must be dissipating heat well. The heatsink made a little difference. Uh, it did make the peak temperatures lower by three degrees, but the big surprise is what happens when the fan is added. The Pico is much cooler. In fact, the effect at maximum overclock is that the temperature is reduced by 10 degrees. The same as if the CPU was only clocked at about 200 megahertz. So I find this really interesting. You're probably wondering whether uh, w whether this allows for higher overclocks. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I couldn't push the CPU any higher uh, with cooling. There's no joy there. 
So what's the conclusion? It doesn't seem uh, necessary to cool your Pico to obtain stable overclocks, but if you are overclocking above 300 or 400 megahertz, it might prolong the working life of your Pico if you cooled it in some way. The other thought is you could dynamically overclock or underclock a Pico to maintain a chosen temperature, a bit like thermal throttling. Anyway, I'd love to hear your views or any insights anyone has on this. Uh, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment and I'll catch you in the next one.